we all know this wand if you've seen the Fantastic Beast movies or even the Harry Potter series this wand plays an important part. So let's discuss the history behind this item. So the wand itself was made of elderwood and it was 15 inches, had a thestral tail hair core and it's the only known wand to actually have this core which is why it's probably so unique and why it's so powerful. For those of you who don't know, the Thestral is that creature that you can only see if you've witnessed someone who's died. So Luna could see it because of her mother and Harry could see it because of having seen Cedric die. So this wand is regarded as incredibly unlucky and extremely hard to master its power and to get it to do what you want it to do. So legend has it that the tale of the three brothers is where the Elder Wand begins its story. So for those of you who don't know, this is again a story that's actually recounted in the Harry Potter movies. So the three brothers were traveling at night, they came across a river, far too treacherous for them to cross. Being magical, however, they just created a bridge, but Death wasn't that happy because they cheated him. Halfway across that bridge, Death appeared. He pretended, whilst enraged, to congratulate them and he presented them with gifts for their cunning defeat. So Antioch Peveril, I'm probably saying that wrong, requested a wand more powerful than any in existence and that is where the Elder Wand was created. The other brothers, one created the ability to bring people back who had passed the resurrection stone and the other one wanted the cape of invisibility the story ends that the brothers with the wands and the resurrection stone died but the, the brother who had the invisibility cloak was able to avoid death and therefore was you know able to greet death as an old friend and when when he passed and, and that's kind of how the story goes it's in the book i believe the beetle and the bard there's a collection of stories and it's in there as well um so you can actually buy those books i do have them so if you were interested you can you can definitely look into that a bit more so back to the one as we said legend goes that death created this on the request of antioch but other wizards such as dumbledore actually believed that and created this wand himself. As you may recall from the story, if you're familiar with it, Peveril killed someone and then he spent the night celebrating his victory and bragging about how he had this super powerful wand. Now he was drunk, so the boasting was obviously not a great idea and it actually involved someone then breaking into where he was staying at night and killing him off. So if you're familiar with wand law, if you defeat the wizard who owns it, then the wand transfers to that, that new person, the, the allegiance, the loyalty, if you like. So Egbert was able to master this wand, but we don't actually know what it was that he did with it. Dumbledore believes that Egbert wasn't actually in possession of this wand for very long. But we don't actually have any information on who killed him and then who subsequently took that wand on. We do know that Godliot became owner of the Elder Wand sometime after Egbert's death, so it is possible that Godliot killed him. When Godliot owned the Elder Wand, he didn't actually use it for conquest, but instead he wrote a book. And this was called Magic Master Evil. And this was the book that taught Voldemort how to create Horcruxes. So... <laughs> Smart move, Egbert. Like, what have you done? The book was completely filled with just dark magic. So, Godliot died during the Middle Ages. Um, he was locked in a cellar by the Elder One's next owner, his own son. A man by the name of Heerwald. Now, I'm probably saying all these names wrong, so I do apologise. Heerwald eventually lost the Elder One, but again, we're not actually sure who took it, how he lost it, and yeah who who then had it afterwards we're going to fast forward to the 18th century whereby barnabas Deverell came to own the elder wand so this wand helped him to gain the reputation of a fearsome warlock but there's actually no information on what actions he took to gain this name and gain gain this notoriety 
So following the murder, Loxius became the next owner of the infamous Elder Wand. He mastered the wand and used it to kill anyone who stood in his way and he coined the phrase Death Stick, which is actually a nickname for this wand. We don't actually know how many people Loxius killed, who killed him, but we do know that many witcher wizards actually claim to have done it, including his own mother. It is... It, it, it takes a special sort for your own mother to turn against you, so yeah, okay. So according to Luna's father, Loxus was killed either by Arcus or L Livius. Now, we don't know much about either of these, and again, we don't know who killed them. And once again, the wand passed on to a new owner. This is probably a name that is familiar to those who are in the know, who know the Harry Potter universe. And I'd say actually a little bit more in depth, so Gregorovich. It's a name that you'll recognise from the films, probably from the books as well. But he is the wand maker who we believe, or who it, who's, not we, who, and it's said to, <laughs> it is believed that he is most likely the person who sold Grindelwald, his first wand, and he became the owner and master of the Elder Wand in the 1900s. Now, as we know, he was an expert wand maker. He was like Ollivander, and he would have been extremely knowledgeable about wand law, but we don't know how he became in possession of that wand. However, we do know that he tried to duplicate the power and he tried to use it to improve business in his shop. So, you know, I guess a star for trying. But this again, it led to someone actually stealing the Elder Wand and stunning Gregorovich as he escaped. So again, the wand was being passed around. Everyone wanted this. So who is the thief of the Elder Wand? Grindelwald, of course. Grindelwald had a desire to obtain the Deathly Wand and he knew that Grigorovich had it. He wanted the Deathly Hallows. This was his way to obtain part of it. By stunning Grigorovich, Grindelwald became the rightful owner of the Elder Wand. He then possessed the wand for decades, using the power to torment Europe. Now I'm going to stop here and just give you all a spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Fantastic Beasts, The Secret of Dumbledore, you may want to pause it here and watch it, or skip ahead. Okay, so, in the third Fantastic Beasts movie, the use of the Elder Wand allowed Grindelwald to reanimate a dead Quillen, a ploy to ensure he is chosen at the next Wisden election. This then led to a confrontation with Dumbledore, where the Elder Wand was being used. After a legendary duel, Albus Dumbledore gained ownership of the wand, which was kept in his possession for the next 40 years. Well, we know he was then buried with it. Dumbledore was a strong and kind wizard. He used the wand for good, and it helped him gain the reputation of the world's most powerful wizard. So powerful, in fact, Voldemort feared only Dumbledore. We also do see Dumbledore used this one several times throughout the Harry Potter movies as well. So again, it really is playing a central role in that story. And I think, you know, until you've kind of got to those, those films where you find out how important this is and around the Deathly Hallows, when you then go back and rewatch it, you start to notice this one more, or at least I did. I started to look for it. When was it being used? How was it being used as well? When Dumbledore was buried with the wand, at that point it was already switched owners. So, although Snape was the one who killed Dumbledore, and we all know why this was, the mere act of Draco Malfoy disarming Dumbledore was enough for the Elder Wand to be his. But Malfoy didn't actually know what he'd done, he didn't realise that by disarming Dumbledore, he'd be able to take possession of the Elder Wand, and therefore he never used it. I don't think he ever actually held it either. So Voldemort then began searching for the Elder Wand. I mean, he is extremely feared. It's like he's a blueprint for Grindelwald. He is literally like a carbon copy. So of course he's thinking, Deathly Hallows, I could be the most powerful person. I need, I need the Elder Wand. 
So what he did was he then killed Gregorovich, he killed Grindelwald, and then that led he who must not be named to Dumbledore's grave, where he then broke in and stole the wand. He found it as that whole scene. It's a little bit weird, a little bit creepy, quite dark. Um, that whole scene where you see Voldemort almost like face to face with a, a very still Dumbledore. Now he was able to use some of the powers of the Elder Wand, but he wasn't able to actually use everything, all of the power that the Elder Wand could do. Now, incorrectly, Voldemort assumed that Snape had allegiance of the Elder Wand, as Snape had killed Dumbledore. But as we've said, Snape didn't disarm him, therefore it didn't belong to Snape. Although Dumbledore successfully killed Snape, he did not have ownership of the Elder Wand, so he didn't know what Draco had done. So finally, we go to the last owner of the Elder Wand, and that was Harry Potter himself. Harry gained ownership of the Elder Wand after a fight with Draco Malfoy and that led him to snatch Draco's wand. Now even though this wasn't the Elder Wand at this point, the act of disarmament meant that all wands in allegiance to Draco were now actually loyal to Harry instead. But Harry wasn't aware of what had actually happened until the final duel between him and Voldemort. Voldemort attempted the killing curse, but it backfired and killed Voldemort instead, as we know. Harry used the Elder Wand to fix his own wand, and then snapped the Elder Wand, throwing the pieces away. Doing that, he actually ended the line of the Elder Wand. Harry couldn't be disarmed with this wand, therefore I don't know if it was put back together, if it even could have been, it obviously would have still had an allegiance to Harry because he wasn't disarmed when he sort of disowned the wand, if you like. So that is, in a nutshell, the full and bloody history of the Elder Wand. I do think that it's quite an interesting lineage. I don't think any other wand in the Harry Potter universe has ever actually been so sought after. And it really does give an interesting backstory when you, when you know just how much this was wanted. I hope you guys liked this video. If you do, give a big old thumbs up. I am planning to do a few more sort of Harry Potter lore stories, going into the history of some of the families, into sort of maybe like some of the other stuff that we don't necessarily know from what JK Rowling has released or from what the books say themselves. It, I think it's a really interesting world. I'm really into this sort of thing, Lord of the Rings fantasy in general. So it is something I do want to explore. But like I say, do let me know what you guys think. Who do you think was the best owner of the wand? Hit that subscribe bell guys so you don't miss anything that's coming out. Add me on TikTok, I post on there quite often and we'll catch you in the next one.